Hello Guardians, it is Ebontis here, and we are back with another Destiny video, this time talking about an event that's going to be starting next week, Solstice of Heroes. You got some cool armor to earn, some very cool looking ornaments and glows to your armor, a couple cosmetics between ships and sparrows and stuff of that nature, so here's a full breakdown on Solstice of Heroes starting August 11th. So the first thing to know about the Solstice of Heroes is the fact that we're going back to the European Aerial Zone. And we got to do this last year. It's actually a pretty cool zone. It's kind of a self-contained arena. Uh, as you guys can see in this picture, and I'll scroll through a couple others so you can get a feel for it. Uh, it's a fairly good sized zone. You're going to have plenty of exploring to do. Uh, sparrows make it fairly quick to get around though. But a lot of the sp zone itself is actually fairly vertical. So you're going to have to figure out ways to traverse around either rooftops or figure out ways to climb up. Because definitely some of the objectives will be on rooftops or on different levels so you're gonna have to definitely get a feel for how to get around the whole zone quickly and definitely cover a lot of ground because a lot of what we do in here is time-based so definitely keep an eye out for that but the european aerial zone itself is broken up into three different kind of sections this picture probably shows it best uh, you can see the one here in the foreground uh, where the guardians are kind of standing you also see how small they are on these rooftops so they are fairly vertical and it's a decent sized zone so definitely plenty of exploring in here and you'll notice the first one here in the forefront almost looks like old school, like, I don't know why I picture like a Transylvania hotel or something like that. And those banners that you can see, the purple kind of fallen banners, you can run across those. So again, as I said, traversing rooftops and getting around, figuring out all the things that you can jump on and across are going to be beneficial to figure out how quickly you can get up to the roof. Because that's sometimes a nice way to get around and get to your next objective. So the back left... Kind of in the background back there, not like Skybox, but you can see it looks more, it's kind of industrial. It looks like almost like a mill or something along those lines, like a factory. That one's in the far back, and then way to the back right is where you're going to be seeing what I would call the kind of commercial apartment building structure, something along those lines. It's definitely like layers of concrete back in that corner, and in the middle you'll kind of have an open, open area that kind of connects all three. So overall, very cool zone. Definitely somewhat vertical, so getting a feel for how to traverse around the place will help you just kind of navigate everything and accomplish your objectives quicker. So it's actually a fairly cool place to run around. Glad to see that it's coming back. The second and probably main thing about this entire event is going to be the armor. And that's what you guys probably saw in the thumbnail, and that's what we'll be talking about. So here what you can see is the statue up in the front, and I think the way it worked last year, probably going to work similar this year, is the fact that you'll go up to the statue, and to start the whole progress of everything, you're going to have to pick up your first set of armor, and it's going to be a low-level blue set of armor. And with that one, what it's going to be is basic stuff that you have to accomplish. Now there's a little data mining, I can't tell you if this is even 100% correct, but I'll just kind of give you an idea. Even if this is last year's objectives, it's still probably going to be fairly close to right because, you know, they're probably not going to branch too far out. So to take your rare, your blue set of armor, like blue tier, like the stuff you run around and pick up all day long that you mostly dismantle, uh, you're going to have to do certain objectives. They're a little easier. When you get to legendary, they get harder. So a couple random examples are going to be for the gauntlets. Uh, defeat 50 combatants, whoever they are, get 50 kills in the super, and in the European aerial zone, say for like the Titan, I have to get 50 arc subclass kills. Cool. So use an arc super, get 50 subclass kills, good to go. Now for a different example, if you come down to the Greaves, and this is all, I'll put a link to kind of the big thread on raid secrets. And this is probably all data mined, so if you don't want to see it, you can wait, but it's probably going to be something like this. The Greaves, for example, complete five public events. So not everything is going to be in the aerial zone. You'll be doing strikes, crucible matches, gambit, all that'll be in there. Uh, I need to get five, 100 orbs in Gambit or Crucible, and then 10 Solstice packages. And the packages come when you're in the European Aerial Zone itself. Uh, what you're going to need to do is... I'm trying to remember. I don't think you buy the packages. No, you might actually buy the packages. When you finish the run-through of all the bosses and kill as much as you can during the European Aerial Zone activity, you'll run around towards the end and pick up as many chests as you can in kind of a limited time frame. And the more bosses you kill, the more chests you can get. And if I'm remembering correctly, the currency you get from the chest allows you to buy the packages. Either way, so you got to do 10 packages. The 10 is really not that bad. That's really not a big deal. But the orbs is one thing you might have a question about. What are 100 void orbs in Crucible or Gambit? Well, depending on your subclass equipped or your weapons, so it's all based on your element type that you're using and that you get the kill with, the enemies that you kill are going to drop orbs. 
So for example, I would probably do Gambit over Crucible just because there's more things to kill. And if you go in there with a Void subclass and Void weapons of both Heavy and Energy, you're probably going to be using your Energy and Heavy weapons a lot. Probably wouldn't use your Kinetic because that really doesn't help as much. Um, but when you're killing the enemies with those weapons or your subclass, they're going to drop orbs. And you just have to pick up 100 of those. They might drop one. They might drop two if they're bigger. I honestly can't remember if they did it that way. But the idea is you're going to be running around picking up orbs. And they're not going to be like charging your light per se. But that's just a, it's part of this event. And enemies everywhere are going to be dropping these orbs. Now, if you kill an enemy with a void, it's going to drop a void orb. But if your teammate that you matched up with kills them with arc, it's going to drop an arc orb. So different people are going to be working on different objectives, different subclasses need different, you know, orb types and different activities. So if you feel like you're fighting with other people, it's probably because they're just working on a different piece of an objective. So overall, just try and focus on your stuff. The plate, for example, if this is accurate, uh, you need 100 solar orbs and strikes. So just go in there with as many solar weapons and a solar subclass as you can. And if you kill enough stuff, you'll probably get your 100 orbs, not too hard. So you go through and you'll take your blue set of armor, accomplish all the objectives. Once the objectives have been completed on all five, you can't upgrade like one piece at a time. You have to have all five finished. You'll come back to the statue and you'll upgrade it to the next tier. And that's gonna at least be a legendary set. Now, the legendary set objectives are going to be a bit more intensive, a bit more grindy. Uh, you need to finish 10 heroic public events maybe. Kill 20 bosses maybe in the European aerial zone. Uh, go to the strike playlist and get 600 kills defeat 300 fallen stuff like that it's definitely going to take longer so the blue to the purple sets of armor not going to be as difficult finishing the objectives on the purple just to, to eventually get to upgrade it to the highest tier which is what you're seeing on screen now now this piece of armor is going to be where you get to the magnificent and that's the masterwork stuff so both the first two like if you go from the rare set to the purple set but without the glow they're just mostly putting in the time they're not overall difficult objectives defeat guardians with arc weapons so take an arc weapon into crucible get 100 kills with it and maybe a heavy as well so may focus on those it's going to take you a little while to do it but it's just time you will eventually get there when it finally gets to the final tier we're talking about the magnificent set of armor that's the one that's going to have the glow that you guys have been seeing on screen here for a little bit the white glow out of the armor comes from master working your what your armor and the objectives are going to be complete the Nightfall Ordeal on Master, so it's 1080. Complete a Nightmare Hunt, just one. It's not that hard, probably, unless the difficulty's weird. There's always one that seems very easy. This year, it's that. Complete the Pit of Heresy. That's the dungeon. Just complete the Pit of Heresy dungeon. So that was from Shadowkeep. That's for this year. Putting that one in there. Win seven Trials of Osiris matches. Not on a single card. You just need seven wins however you get them. We also need that for the Moments of Triumph as well. So at least if you haven't done that yet, which I haven't, now you can hit two birds with one stone. The last one is complete a Tier 5 Altar of Sorrow three times. So you got to kill the final boss in Altars of Sorrow three different times. Going to take a little while, uh, but those are more like top tier objectives. If you do all of those, your armor will have this white glow to it. Pretty cool, right? And apparently also, once you unlock the Majestic set, or the Magnificent, I'm sorry, Magnificent is the top. So it goes the lower tier. Uh, let me see, make sure I get these names right. You've got the Renewed, which is going to look kind of like crap. Then you're going to get the Majestic, which is the Legendary, but not glowing. And then you get the Magnificent, which is these awesome glows. Those are the three tiers. Once you get the Magnificent set of armor, you can continue to earn more randomly rolled pieces for your Magnificent armor set. So you can get random rolls from the European Aerial Zone. So the more time you spend in there, if you're going for that god roll and you want to have this white glow, you can work on getting armor that will actually look like this and hopefully you can get a good stat roll to go with it. Now the other side is this picture. Now these are all the colors. Now the cool thing about this is these are going to be ornaments. So realistically what you're looking at here is you can make any armor set that you get down the road, old, new, raid armor, whatever it is, you can put the... Um, solstice of armor ornaments on and you can make any set of armor look like this and they're all you only need one set per character these will come from eververse so these will be purchasable be it bright dust or silver so keep that in mind the glow the colorful glows are going to be something you do have to either buy with bright dust or silver it's up to you guys but again that's where they're going to be monetizing part of this thing the good thing this year 
you don't have to buy three different sets. All you have to do is buy the one set of ornaments for, say, my Titan right here in the middle. I buy the Titan uh, ornament set from Eververse, and depending on what subclass I have equipped, it's going to change the color of the glow. Now, say I'm running an Arc subclass. It's going to glow like the one on the right, like the Warlock's wearing. If I'm rolling a sol Solar subclass, it's going to have the orange glow and void and so forth. Now, the really cool thing about it is this. When Beyond Light comes out in the fall, if you have a Stasis subclass equipped, it will also glow with the Stasis glow, which looks like this. Now, that's actually pretty cool that the ornament will continue to change and also reflect the new subclasses we're getting in the fall. Still fall. I always keep wanting to say it's almost, almost winter because it's November, but you will also be able to have a stasis glow. So these are the ornaments that you have to purchase, but you can make any armor set look like this. They're ornaments. So again, just, you know, tag those on top of your armor and you're good to go. And they just reflect the glow of your subclass and they will include stasis. So that's a cool addition. Kind of nice, a little subtle thing to give us ready for the fall. You won't see it until Beyond Light comes out, but it's something you can look forward to. So... If you're looking for, you know, cool looking glows and you want to enjoy the uh, stasis subclass, might be seeing how much, you know, bright dust you've got. Or it might be one of those rare times to be, hey, I'll get 50, my favorite class maybe. I'll buy the ornaments for that. Maybe not for the other two, but for one set, definitely might consider it. Now I'm going to have a little clip playing in here. It's from Bungie. So you can actually see what the glows look like on the armor. And you guys can see as it repeats, you've got the white glows. They really do stand out next to the armor. So the white glows are really definitely pop because it's a dark colored armor. The glows are very bright. And again, the hot, the more your subclass is fully charged, like your super is charged, the brighter I think it glows. I'm pretty sure that's how that works. But also when you can see when you go over the different colors, those actually have a pretty cool effect to them as well. The orange, the light, the void is a bit more subtle, but again, they match your subclass. So again, just an idea so you can see what they look like before you buy them in case you were curious. And the blue for the stasis looks like it's going to be deeper, deeper, almost like a darker royal blue. That one's almost like a sky blue for the arc subclass. The stasis will definitely be different. But again, the ornament that you, the, the glow that you earn for your armor just by doing the objectives is going to be white. If you want the colors, that's from Eververse. So just trying to make that one clear for everybody so there's no questions later on. And here's just one final picture of kind of what the armor looks like. More kind of rendered like in-game models, stuff like that, as opposed to the, you know, almost cinematic looking pictures. This looks more like what your character screen would probably look like. So you can see where the reflections would be, where the ornaments are, where the color schemes are going to be, the gold, the silver, the underglow underneath. Just gives you an idea of really what they look like. Now, of course, you know we're going to have cosmetics involved in a seasonal event as well. So you got three ghosts up in the right. These all crack me up. One looks like it's got a golf visor. Another one looks, looks like it's got like a sun hat. Couldn't even tell you what the one in the middle is, but they all look pretty fun. To me, what I'm digging on right now is the sparrows and the ships. I really like this aesthetic of almost like the under... It looks like lightning, but it's really kind of like the breakout of your light. The ship, really going to... I'm hoping that thing is... Something I can earn because that looks really, really cool. It's almost like a TIE fighter ship. Very, very kind of digging that one. So, of course, with any seasonal event, there's no question that we're definitely going to get some cosmetics. Kind of had to assume that one, right? Uh, so we've got two um, emotes, both very cool. One just kind of like looking up at the sun, kind of basking in all its glory. And the other one looks like they're holding the big reflective thing so they can get a tan. we got three different ghosts up there. One looks like it's got like a golf visor. Another one has that hat on it. And then finally here on the left, we have what I would say the coolest stuff is the sparrows and the ships. Now the top sparrow, it looks kind of cool, but it's that kind of bulkier version. And you can't quite see the light busting out quite as much. But the bottom sparrow, that's the one I'm kind of digging on. Looks more like a torpedo, so very like clean and sleek. And as you can see all the way down the, the front section of the sparrow, you get to see more of where the light's breaking through. It almost looks like the lightning effect. And the black and gold with the lightning, I'm kind of kind of digging it. Now, the ship itself, I hopefully can earn this thing. I don't know if I'm going to have to buy it, but I'm kind of digging it either way. I wonder how it's going to take shaders. But it's like a TIE fighter, TIE fighter, jet fighter combination. You got the black part in the back with like the light lightning breaking through. The gold, you know, two little spears up front. I really like the ship. Now, previously, I can't remember if it was last year or the year before... What you had to do to earn the ship and why I nearly like blew my brains out because it is a lot of grind if you're going to do all three characters. So just prepare if that's your plan and try and spread it over the month. Don't burn through this thing too crazily. But the idea with the ship was you had to get the 
legendary armor. You didn't have to masterwork all three, but you had to get to the majestic set, the middle, the second tier completed to be able to get the ship. On You have to do it on all three characters to be able to get the ship. Now, I don't know if it's the same, but again, they're showing it here, so that is a possibility of what you might have to do to get the ship. And if that's the case, I'm going to be doing all three characters. That's all I know. So that's the cosmetics, at least that I can see for Solstice of Heroes. So that pretty much wraps up Solstice of Heroes. Hopefully this gives you guys an idea of what we're going to be doing over the next month for your kind of summer event. And gives you an idea of how much you want to try and plan for, what you want to go for. Maybe it's just one character. Get the armor set there and get the ornaments and you're good to go. Maybe you want to go for all three. Not sure what the final little objectives are once we can actually log in on Tuesday when it starts. We'll get a feel for any final little tidbits that they haven't shown us. Maybe the ship is all three characters up to legendary status. Who knows? But that is everything for Solstice of Heroes that I can cover for you guys. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you guys for the support lately. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please hit that sub button. We are not that far from 50k. I can't thank you all for the support enough lately. It's been fantastic. You can also find me on Twitch and Twitter. It's Ebontis on both of those. We'll be recording the Last Word podcast tomorrow morning. 9 a.m. Eastern Time. We've got Hoplite coming on. She's an awesome, awesome lady, and she will be joining us for the podcast in the morning. So tune in on twitch.tv slash Ebontis for that. Thank you guys. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like below. Leave a comment if you have thoughts, opinions, questions, or just want to say hello. Other than that, I will see you soon, and have a good one.